Hello friends, I just wanted to make a quick statement before the video begins. I know some of you were a little bit concerned uh, upon hearing about this video that it would be very scary and not uh, necessarily something you would enjoy falling asleep to. So I want to assure you that none of these listings, in my opinion, are really scary. Um, and none of the stories of the hauntings are violent or anything. That said, if you are very sensitive and um, tend to be bothered by scary things very easily, the first listing is a little bit spooky and has some very slightly spooky pictures. So I've put in a timestamp if you want to skip that one, but um, the rest of them should be safe for everyone to enjoy. The first one probably is too, but just out of an abundance of caution. Anyway, I have rambled long enough. I hope you enjoy the video, and let me know in the comments if you would live in any of these homes. Okay, enjoy. Okay. Oh, that's a fun one. Pulling up the Skype call and waiting. Hi, Miss Rose. This is Veda. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I've really been excited for our call all week. It's such a, a unique request and really something I've never gotten to do before. So. I appreciate you choosing ASMR Realty to work with, because this was so much fun. Okay, so I have put together several listings for you of haunted and paranormal properties. I understand you are looking for somewhere for your next bed and breakfast. Okay, perfect. And location wasn't really an issue for you, so we're looking at the entire country. Your real specification was that the property be um, haunted or have documented paranormal activity. Okay, excellent. So, it was really an interesting search to do because most of the time the listing agent is not trying to play up the haunted aspect. A lot of people are not interested in that, so they won't put it in the listing itself. So, I do have for each of these two write-ups um, the first one being the listing write-up from the agent, and the second one being particularly about the haunting of the property. In fact, only one of the properties on the list has really leaned into that sort of um, haunted aspect, and I think you'll understand why it's quite notorious, but each of them has their charms, and most of them are quite beautiful, so... I think you'll be really happy with some of these offerings. Also, it appears that New England seems to be a hotbed for hauntings, so... Okay, fabulous. Yeah, I was just making sure that that would be a suitable location if you were to choose one of those homes, because... Yes, I think it would be a wonderful location for a bed and breakfast. I know there's a lot of beautiful ones there, so I'm sure yours would be a fabulous addition. Okay, I'm just gonna pull up the first listing now, and if you have questions as we go through, feel free to ask. I will tell you as much about the properties as I'm aware of, and then if you do want to look at any of them in person, I will um, get in touch with one of our local agents in the area, and they'll be able to show you the properties. Okay, so the first one is 1677 Round Top Road in Burrowville, Rhode Island. It is currently going for $1,200,000, and this is the only one that really leans into the haunted aspect of the home. That's because it's actually the home that was featured in the movie The Conjuring. Okay. Yeah, I figured you might have seen it if you're sort of a paranormal um, buff. So, this was uh, the house that's featured in the first Conjuring movie. It's a beautiful sort of farmhouse, and 
really, it's, it's sort of the only creepy one on our list, but it's very cool and could be a really good location for um, a bed and breakfast. So I'll start by reading the Realtors write-up. It is three beds, one and a half bath, 3,109 square feet. Every so often, an opportunity presents itself to possess an extraordinary piece of cultural history. The true story of the conjuring started in this very house in Harrisville, Rhode Island. The critically acclaimed original movie was based on accounts taken from inhabitants of this 14-room farmhouse. Rumored to be haunted by the presence of Bathsheba Sherman, who in the 1800s lived in the house. 1677 Round Top Road is one of the most well-known haunted houses in the United States. The chilling stories from this house have inspired dozens of books and movies. Many qualified paranormal investigators have been invited into the home, most famously Ed and Lorraine Warren, who founded the oldest ghost hunting team in New England, and in the 1970s were hired to rid the home of its evil. The Warrens confirm that the events depicted in the Conjuring movies actually transpired. The current caretakers have reported countless happenings in the house, and have turned overnight guest bookings and group events on the property into a steady, successful business. So, this one already has a jump start on the bed and breakfast type of business. So, looking here, um, the other write-up, this one already talked about being the site of The Conjuring and uh, somewhere that Ed and Lorraine Warren worked. So, in more detail it says, apparently, mysterious bright flashes of light, a creepy girl's voice, looming shadows, as well as unexplained footsteps and knocks still occur in the 200-year-old house. The current owners don't live there, but they use it as a short-term rental for paranormal enthusiast group events. The three-bedroom, 3,109-square-foot structure is rustic but livable if you don't mind sharing it with otherworldly residents and creepy Raggedy Ann dolls. It sits on a wooded eight and a half acre lot with a couple of wooden outbuildings on the property. Okay. So we can go ahead and start looking through the photos on this one. You'll see in the first photo, the outside of the home definitely has sort of a cabin vibe in the middle of the woods. Quite creepy. And this one has very atmospheric photos, uh, at least to start. So if we go in, you can see this sort of creepy photo of a chair and some old wide plank wood floors. And here we have um, some staged Raggedy Ann dolls. I don't know if you know the lore of Annabelle. Okay, of course. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is sort of paying homage to um, Annabelle, which the Warrens also worked on. So here is a nice library. Again, sort of an atmospheric photo, not showing the entire room. But I believe the books come with the property if you request them. And another Raggedy Ann doll. This one's stored inside of a grandfather clock. And another one. This is an, actually a replica of um, Annabelle, which would be in the Warren's Museum. It says, warning positively, do not open. Because, as you know, um, Annabelle is contained within the box. Another atmospheric photo. And here's one of a rocking chair. You can kind of see the overall style of the home is quite rustic. Um, maybe could use some updates, but I wouldn't on this sort of home where really the lore and the, what's bringing people in is the haunting and the rustic nature itself. Here we have another view of the fireplace. And a broken window. Very creepy. And here's a view of the grounds. So you will see a large plot of land. Right now it is well mown. You can see the fence enclosing part of the property sort of a view from above the house. And another angle, the same. 
and here are some of those outbuildings I mentioned, which would be great for storing tools. Looks like it even has a hutch if you wanted to have chickens on the property. Might be great for fresh eggs for the bed and breakfast. Another outbuilding. This one is quite a bit larger. Could be used as a garage. You could even convert it for extra guest space. And another view from above. Several views from above. We'll get through all of those. Okay, and here you are in the very rustic kitchen. You see we have sort of those older cabinets that really lend itself to the style of the home and more very rough, wide boards on the floor. Very much a rustic farmhouse. And here's the dining area. You see we have the fireplace, which is functional. On the left side, you see there's no central air in this house, of course, because it is quite old, being built in 1836, but they do have some units to keep it nice and cool in the summer. This is a large room suitable for your guests to have their breakfast. And another angle of this room. And one of the bathrooms. So it is only one and a half bath. You probably wouldn't want to have several guests at a time in this property, but you could use it as um, a small bed and breakfast or even an Airbnb, or you could convert it to have more bathrooms and rooms. Okay, so we have this rustic bathroom. I quite like those um, shutters on the window. And here's another sitting area. You can have a view of the Ouija boards on the wall and the Raggedy Ann dolls again. And another angle of the same room. And here's another angle of that library we saw earlier. Little sitting space for reading. You have two nice windows. And all of the staging furniture can come with the home um, if we negotiate for it. Okay, another view of the bookcases. And Another view of the same room showing additional bookcases on the other side of the room and more seating. And here's another sitting area by the fireplace. Definitely keep it nice and warm in the winter. Better view of that fireplace. And a view of the other side of the room. If you'll see, again, the floor is quite rough, so you're definitely getting sort of that older feel and then the exposed floorboards up top. Okay, here's a hallway area. And this is the entryway. If you look on the left here, I believe this is uh, the current owners standing with the real Annabelle. I assume they'll want to take that with them. Here's one of the bedrooms. This one has two children's beds in it and a large papasan chair. Also has a chalkboard on the wall. Another view of this room. And another bedroom. This is again staged with a twin bed, a rocking chair. The ceilings are a bit low, but that would be common of the time. And another view of this room. And another room. This would be the primary bedroom. It has a queen bed in it right now, but you could easily fit a king. You'll see two windows with those shutters and um, quite plain walls. It does look like plaster. You might want to have that worked on, but I think it lends itself sort of to the haunted appeal of the house to leave it a little bit rustic. Another view of the same room. And a view showing another fireplace and a closet. Okay. Here is another view looking into one of the sitting rooms. The twin bed that we saw before. And a hallway. And again, the view back to the outside. So, this house, um, quite interesting. Very rustic. So this one is probably the 
least opulent of the houses we'll look at, and also one of the smallest. The others are a bit bigger and might lend themselves better to a larger bed and breakfast, but this one definitely has the most notoriety of the bunch. Okay, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I figured we'd start there because it is sort of the most creepy. The rest are pretty tame but very lovely, so we will move on now to this one is 31 Old Beach Road in Newport, Rhode Island, another Rhode Island home. It was built in 1873. It's 12 bed, 12 and a half bath, 5,838 square feet. And it is just stunning, as you can see. It is um, a very large home, lots of room for guests. And I will read the realtor's write up first. So, presenting the George Champlin Mason House, the private estate of Newport's most famed native architect, whose work includes the Eisenhower House, Chepstow, and the Naval War College. The mansion has been meticulously restored and features 12 bedrooms and 13 bathrooms. Highlights of the main floor include a handsome library with a gas fireplace and double doors to a gracious covered porch. A large formal dining room serviced by a butler's kitchen, a fully updated kitchen with exposed shelving, and a lovely drawing room and wood-burning fireplace. Impressive design elements include an elaborate gable-ended porch, Swiss chalet-style filigree wood trim, carved fireplace mantles and intricate parquet flooring. The tranquil sounds are comprised of lush gardens, a terrace for alfresco dining and beautiful specimen trees, and extraordinary opportunity to own a piece of Newport's architectural history, ideally located near Cliff Walk, Easton Speech, and Bellevue Avenue. So this one is very different from The Conjuring Home, um, updated and beautiful, very large, and centrally located. Now for the other blurb. So this one says, you can check in anytime you like, but this classic Victorian bed and breakfast is so charming, the original owner is having a hard time leaving it, and he died in 1894. The current owner says that George C. Mason, the original architect of the ornate 5,838 square foot house, built in 1873, has been seen arriving home from his day at work. There have also been sightings of a lady of the house in Victorian attire descending the stairs, and of a woman with a baby in a nursery sitting in an Edwardian chair. All paranormal encounters are reported to have been positive thus far. They're relatively well publicized, and they haven't deterred guests from checking in. Bookings for the 11 ensuite guest rooms at the Architects Inn remain solid. So, this is also a currently operating bed and breakfast, beautiful home, and a little bit less um, ominous than the previous one, where it's just been sightings and it's been very positive. Okay, so first you'll notice on the outside this beautiful front of the home with a porch and balcony. You'll see some of those Swiss chalets, excuse me, that's hard to say. Swiss chalet style carvings up at the top. Very beautiful and intricate. So here's a picture of the grand foyer. You come into this beautiful sweeping curved staircase. You'll notice the floors have been recently redone. Quite gorgeous. Narrow planks. You'll see it has a chair rail along the wall. And the bottom half of the wall is painted a accent color, sort of a beautiful mustardy color. Also, the furnishings with this house do come with it for the right price. Here we have a better view of that staircase curving around. And one of the bedrooms. This is the blue room. See, it has a gorgeous four-poster bed and working fireplace in the corner. This is quite a large room. The bed is a queen. It could fit a king if you decided to upgrade, and it has three large windows, room for a sitting space as well. 
here is the bathroom. Look at that wallpaper. Beautiful and intricate. Perfect for the style of the house. You'll see a claw foot tub with a shower system so your guests can enjoy a relaxing bath or shower. And a pedestal sink. This is the yellow room. You'll see more gorgeous and intricate wallpaper. Another four poster bed. Quite a large space as well. This one is a king bed see another working fireplace and some beautiful period appropriate furniture. The red room, more intricate wallpaper, a queen four poster bed, really intricate. I love the carvings on the sides of the bed. Another working fireplace and if you can see in this one the parquet floors, just stunning, newly redone. Okay, another yellow room. This one has two twin beds. Really, really pretty. Would be great um, for people that are staying that don't want to share a bed or perhaps if somebody is bringing their children with them in a separate room. And another room done in yellow and blue. This one a bit smaller. However, it is a queen size bed. Two nightstands and a desk if somebody needs to work. Again, this home is quite a bit older, so it does not have central air, but this one does have a window unit in this room. And here is your gorgeous dining area. Can't you just picture your guests enjoying breakfast here? Yeah. Oh, it's quite nice. You have a beautiful crystal chandelier in the middle, large table. Again, gorgeous wallpaper below the chair rail, and very large window with some Quite nice curtains. And here's the kitchen. <laughs> it's very different from the Conjuring House. This is a beautifully updated kitchen that also managed to keep some of the charm of the older home. You see we have really, really nice shaker cabinets and beautiful stainless steel appliances. We have even the stainless steel sink and wall oven. We have a wood stove on the left. Looks like you could easily convert that into a pizza oven if you were interested. Yeah. We have open shelving and um, they did such a beautiful job organizing the kitchen. And now the center here would be a great space for you to eat with your family or even for guests to have an evening snack. And here's a closer view of uh, the staging that they've done, which really is quite immaculate and should be at this price. And another angle. You can see they, it looks like they have some VHS tapes, probably for guests to use. And yet another angle. Okay, so here's one of the large lower sitting rooms. This one is done in beautiful, like, peacock blue-green. We have a TV there. We have some gorgeous furniture with sort of matching curtains, three large windows, and another working fireplace. And here's a view of the mantle and the sort of trinkets and art above it. I really like the carving on the mantle. You can also see the really unique art on the tile around the fireplace. And here is another kitchen. This is sort of um, just, um, say, sort of a prep kitchen. Might not be the one where the guests go. Maybe just for you, but still very nice. And here is the back porch. Good area for sitting. You can see French doors leading out to here. We have some nice lattice work. And more detailed shots. Okay, this structure in the back is really unique. Could be used as storage, but it's quite beautiful if you see all the nice stonework. And here's a hedge with um, sort of a gate going through it. You can see some of the landscaping. And the driveway, which circles around, though they have it blocked with some planters. They do have labeled parking spaces. You can see this is an active business. It is a gravel driveway, and that tree is just stunning. Okay. 
And we are back to the front of the house. Really, really pretty inside. I think this one, you could go right in and immediately start your bed and breakfast here. You could probably even take over the current business if you wanted to keep their name. It's really turnkey, ready to go. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So, at least we're on the right track. Yeah, this one's nice because it does have that sort of um, allure of the paranormal, but it's also such a beautiful place and I'm sure anybody would be happy to stay in. Okay, so again, that was 31 Old Beach Road. And our next one, we're actually going to depart from Rhode Island. Go ahead and pull that up. This one is in Mississippi, and this is 138 East Fulton Street in Canton, Mississippi. So this one is selling for 938,000. It's a four bed, four bath, 5,252 square foot home built in 1852. So I'll start with the realtor's blurb. There are a few homes in Mississippi with the grandeur and historical significance that the Priestley home offers. Located a block south of the center of Canton, this revived beauty offers four stately bedrooms, four bathrooms, a formal dining room, music room, parlor, library, office, sleeping porch, pool, terrace, and greenhouse, all in peak condition. Built by Dr. James Priestley in 1852, the original house consisted of the front porch, the grand staircase, and four rooms. Various rooms and wings were added throughout the years, including an office, the current library, and an examining room for Dr. Priestley, which is now the kitchen. Later additions completed in 1915 included bathrooms incorporating the kitchen, which had been detached, and a dining room. The current owner has meticulously restored the home to its original splendor, both structurally and cosmetically, going as far as to seek out historically correct hardware and to retrieve the original dining room doors. New piers and steel beam foundation have been added. So, this home is fully renovated, and um, it was renovated historically as well, so more so restored. So that's the blurb that the realtor wrote. Let me pull up the one with the haunting information. Okay. The Priestley home is well known in Mississippi for its stately beauty and remarkable renovation, but it also comes with a curiously haunting story. It was built by Dr. James Priestley in 1852, who lived there happily with his wife until they died. Their presence can reportedly be felt on the front porch, the grand staircase, and four other rooms. Expanded and remodeled over the decades, the house now has four bedrooms, a formal dining room, music room, parlor, library, office, and sleeping porch. The owners made headlines in 2002 when they claimed that a ghostly woman had appeared, a piano had played on its own, candles had fallen from their holders, that they had detected hot spots in the room where Mrs. Priestley died. Paranormal specialists claim their equipment was inexplicably tampered with when they came to investigate. So, this one's really, really interesting. And again, it has that paranormal aspect, but similar to the last one, is a beautiful home. Okay, so we see in the first picture, we have this very stately home with some large pillars. And here is a view from above showing a roof in very good condition. And another view from above, you can see the beautiful in-ground pool in the back of the home and all of that lush greenness. Another view from above. And here's a view from the side of the front porch. You can see beautiful large porch, great area for sitting, including a swing. Really nice landscaping as well. A closer view. And a view from the other side where you can see more of how really beautiful this is. It's very clean, 
beautifully redone. You can see the glossiness that they chose to do on the boards of the porch. See those lovely shutters on the sides of the windows. Everything looks very nice. Other side. And again, another view of the front of the house showing more of that landscaping. Gorgeous brick coming up to those front steps. And here's a view that shows the white picket fence with gate in the front as well. Another angle. An angle from the street. A side angle. Another side view. Same photo as before. It's a little repetitive. <laughs> More views of the landscaping. I promise we'll get inside the house eventually. More landscaping. And finally, we have entered the house. Here is the beautiful foyer with a sitting area. You can see a lovely staircase as well. Not the curved sweeping one from before, but really pretty nonetheless. And another view of that foyer. And a view of the front door. As you can see, we have that large French door with extra windows off to the side. This really has been lovingly restored. The floors are in great condition. And that blue is very um, popular and I think a color that your guests would love. And here's the sitting room. We have a baby grand piano, beautiful fireplace. Again, the furniture conveys for the right price. Beautiful mirror over that fireplace and crystal chandelier in the middle of the room. And another view of this room shows that it is, in fact, also a library. So we have quite a few built-in bookshelves here, too. Another angle. And now this. Look at this sitting room. We have two nice settees facing each other. Quite ornate. We see a fireplace off to the right. Off to the left, a really intricate hutch. And it is separated from, it looks like, the dining area with these curtains. Another beautiful chandelier in here as well. And take a look in the ceiling in this. You see that beautiful detailing on the ceiling? Okay. Now, this is another view of that sitting room. You can see it's right next to the stairway in the foyer. Another angle. And here we have what I thought was dining, but actually looks like an office. So, we have several bookcases in here as well. You can even see a ladder off to the right on that bookcase. Beautiful desk. This would be a great place for check-ins. And, yes, better view of that built-in bookshelf. Stunning. We have a fireplace behind as well. Another angle angle. Okay, so we're back sort of at the back of the foyer. You see this has double staircase. And here we are at the back doors. We see the French doors going out. Another staircase here. It looks like it might be what would have been maybe servant's stairs. Okay, here's another angle. And here's your dining room. So, You'll see this room is separated by a beautiful sliding door, another intricate chandelier. We do have some detailing on the walls here as well, and you can see the floors, how glossy they are, They're newly refinished. Another angle of this room, and another. And here is a bathroom, one of four. This has a clawfoot bath with an attachment for spray. This one does not have the shower, but could easily have one put in. You see a pedestal sink as well, and a little medicine cabinet above it. Another angle of this room. Oh, and it does look like there is a shower here as well, so you wouldn't need to add one. And here's one of the bedrooms. It looks really comfortable. Done in a very popular sage green. Floors look immaculate. You see we have a four-poster bed believe that's a full bed and a fireplace in here as well. Here's one of the entrances. And here we have just a little upstairs hallway with lots of windows. 
you can see that beautiful clapboard along the siding here. Again, not the modern ship lap. This is original to the house. And here's what they would call the sleeping porch. So it is screened in. Multiple fan lights up top. Keep it nice and breezy no matter the time of year. And nice sitting areas. People could take a meal out here in the morning if the weather permits. Here's another bathroom. You can see the shower. Another pedestal sink. And this lovely sort of mauve built-in cabinet on the wall. Another bedroom, same sage green. And another bathroom. Okay, and I believe this is the bathroom we saw before, if I'm not... Okay, <laughs> I'm just making sure I'm not losing my mind. It does say four, four bedrooms, excuse me, the bedroom we saw before. And here we go, okay. Here's another bedroom, this one done in blue with two twin beds. Again, we have that beautiful detail on the wall. Another fan in here. And the last photo is another bedroom. They have it. I think that's a twin bed along the side. And it looks like an art studio in here. Okay, so this is a very beautiful home. Um, a much more reasonable price than the previous, but also about the same size. It just isn't quite set up for as many guests as the other. Yes. Um, the outside also includes lush flower beds and established herb gardens, so the landscaping on this one is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I do have another to show you. Yeah, okay. So, this one is way across the country. We're in Washington for this one. Just pull it up here. Okay, so this is 744 Clay Street in Port Townsend, Washington. It is built in 1889. It's 11 bed, 8.5 bath, 5,796 square feet. And as you can see, it is quite stunning. Really just eye-catching. Look at those trees blooming around the edge with the pink that matches the house. Okay, I'll get to the blurb. This is the Realtors write-up. Welcome to the Starrett House, the Grand Dame, a pivotal Victorian home in Port Townsend. Private home or turnkey B&B. Uh, most antique furnishings are included. Built in 1889 by George Starrett for his wife Anne. This home has 11 bedrooms, 10 baths, library, parlor, sitting room, and more. A rare free-hung staircase rises 70 feet from the ground floor to dome. Frescoes of maidens grace the dome, situated on a corner lot sized to maximize light and views. Exquisite woodwork, painted high ceilings, period light fixtures and hardware, fire suppression system, and fur floors close to downtown shopping, library, and beaches. Time-tested brick foundation and sturdy faux slate roof. So not only is this beautiful, it's very safe for guests, quite large and can accommodate many people, and it is centrally located. Now for the spooky write-up. A B&B with ghostly benefits. According to paranormal expert experts. People who truly loved their home sometimes like to stick around after they've shuffled off to a higher plane. That could also mean that people who really love their jobs may want to continue doing them once they've passed on. It's possible in this case with George Starrett and his intrepid nanny. Starrett, a wealthy contractor, built the gorgeous Queen Anne Victorian mansion for his beloved wife Anne back in 1899. Now that the house is serving as a boutique inn, some guests have claimed that she expresses her displeasure when they break the house rules. This is referring to the nanny, actually. The nanny acts out by generating negative feelings, pushing cold drafts, lifting pictures off the walls, and throwing them on the floor. Visitors don't seem to mind these otherworldly encounters in what's become known in Port Townsend as the Grand Dame. 
the elegant 11 bedroom bed and breakfast is solidly booked. It features a library, parlor, sitting room, and dome with frescoes of maidens. So, again, this seems like more of a sort of a mischievous haunting, nothing scary. And it is currently a thriving bed and breakfast, so would be an excellent opportunity for your business. So if we go back to the photo, you'll see this beautiful, striking pink color definitely stands out. Very ornate Victorian style. And here we have this gorgeous staircase. So this is curves all the way up. You see this entryway is sort of rounded, quite nice, has a little bit of a sitting area, but the staircase is really the focal point of this room. You also see a stained glass window, which is quite nice. And here's a better view of that staircase, curving all the way up to the top dome with um, beautiful artwork up there. And here is the very top of the dome where your guests can actually go up and look out at that spectacular view. Here's another side view, the house on the exterior. And here is one of the sitting rooms downstairs with an upright piano, some gorgeous antique furniture, really good artistic details at the top of the walls there, and a fireplace with ornately carved mantle. And here's a view of the sitting room, looks like dining room on the left, showing more of that gorgeous furniture and styling. The colors are quite stunning in this house, and you'll see the ceilings are very ornate. Another exterior view. And here is the dining area in a very sunny yellow. Large space, great space for guests to have breakfast. You can see all of the natural light flowing in. You'll see a built-in cabinet on the, the far wall there. And another view of the same room. And here we have another large sitting area. See some settees and a little separate area in the corner. Another view of that separate area. And here's just so that you can see some of the intricate details around the crown molding and the ceiling. And here is the kitchen. You see it is set up as a commercial kitchen. We have the large sink and dishwashing area, and appliances right there. And the other side. And another view. Here is sort of a library room done in green. You'll see built-in bookshelves there. And one of the beautiful upstairs rooms. This is a king bed. This bed does come with the home. It's rather ornate and quite heavy, sturdy. Little sitting area in this window nook. And a bathroom with a shower and pedestal sink. And this lovely hallway. Another bedroom. This one has a full bed. I think the angle makes it a little bit more uh, looking like a twin, but it is a full bed in this room. See some nightstands there as well. Two windows to let in lots of beautiful natural light. Another bedroom. This one has a queen bed, four poster, some lovely wallpaper in here with yellow at the top, and this green room bed for poster, green wallpaper, some uh, beautiful chairs for sitting. Another view of the same room actually shows an adjoining room, this purple. And this beautiful purple room, you see the sitting area over here in a cutout window nook, king bed uh, for poster, and very nice um, intricate curtains. I think this might be my favorite room so far view of that sitting area, and some of your views with the beautiful water off in the distance. And here we have a lovely view of 
the purple room with the clawfoot tub in it, which is kind of interesting. So the clawfoot tub there, we have a pedestal sink, and of course those doors close, but it goes right out onto a landing for the staircase. Okay, this is one of the top rooms. It's just sort of a sitting area, office style, sort of um, maybe a long-term stay suite type of room with a very large bathtub built in. Then we have more of that same room. You see a large sort of um, window here and another part of that room with sort of a day bed. And here's a queen bed. I think that's the owner's quarters up there. Okay, this one is the backyard. We have a little swing back here, concrete patio with um, doors leading in, and also we see a little balcony here as well. This is where the doors lead into. It is the lower floor, original brick. Remember we talked about the brick foundation. And this is the room on the um, garden level, we would say. It's a king bed. And more views of that same room on the garden level. We do have some bookcases there. More of that gorgeous exposed brick. And the bathroom down there, we have a pedestal sink and a red tub. Another view of the same room. This shows a sitting area. And then this would just be sort of, a, looks like a catch-all room, maybe where they do their bookkeeping. But this definitely has great potential um, for a bed and breakfast, especially as it's already operating as one. So this one could be a wonderful choice that has some very gorgeous rooms. more. There were a couple more, but I think these were some of the best ones. Yeah. That one, that one is really, um, that one's something special, I think. I think that one would definitely be my favorite, and I can coordinate with the local realtor for you to see that when you're available. Would you, you'd be flying in. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, do you know a date that you would like to see it? Oh, absolutely, yes. Where, where you're flying in and everything, of course. I have drafted the email to you. Let me go ahead and send this email to you. It has all of the listings that we went over, but I will emphasize that one in particular. Once you get your schedule figured out, go ahead and either email me or call me back and I can um, get together with the local realtor and set up a showing time for you. Really, any day should be fine with this home. It's been on the market for 266 days now, so, and it's also still operating as a bed and breakfast, so I'm sure you'd be able to get in and see it. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll we'll try to figure out a time where you can see all of the rooms if possible though. So hopefully we won't have to go back multiple times, but where they really are trying to sell shouldn't be an issue. Um, but I'll reach out to the uh, realtor now anyway and let them know that you are interested. We're going to be scheduling a time when you're available. Then maybe they can talk to the current owners and, and see about what might be the best times of day for that. Okay, so I will be eagerly awaiting your email and I'll let you know if there's any updates or anything the local realtor hears from the sellers that you should know. Okay, perfect. All right, so that email has been sent off to you. Okay, you've got it. All right, lovely. Well, it's been a real pleasure, excuse me, been a real pleasure talking to you, Ms. Rose. This is such a fun project, and I'm really excited to see what you do with um, the home. If you buy it, though, it really doesn't need any work, but I think your business will thrive there. 
Do you have any other questions for me? Okay. Well, it was wonderful speaking with you today, and um, I'll wait for your email. All right. You have a great day. a local realtor.